Today I'm going to do an episode on uh, cocaine. Uh, I tried to do it, but I guess I went on too long, so I'll have to be more brief. Um, there's a program that came out. It was, it was called Crack, uh, Cocaine, the, the Party Drug. Um, so I'll put a link on it, and you can watch it there. Um, back in the 70s, this was the party drug that everyone used. Um, there were many stories. I remember one in particular, a guy came to play tennis with us. He was from uh, California, and I guess he was friends with Vetus Gariolitis, who, if you know, was a great tennis player, but was known to partake in, in, in crack and a lot of drugs. And he was telling us in those days they would bring out a big bowl and put it on the table, and anybody could take whatever they wanted. Um, it was nothing like the 70s. There will never be anything like it again. It was just a, 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 a time where everyone was naive and f it was a fun time and everyone was uh, so non-judgmental. It's uh, really different than today. So I learned about it from then. Um, we had never even heard of things like this, but I guess it was big in the U.S., um, but not uh, disseminated so much because we didn't have the internet back then. Um, and then today I just watched, uh, there's a program called uh, Trafficked by National Geographic with the host Mariana Van Zeller. She's very good. Um, the only criticism I have is sometimes she tries to make uh, heightened drama with, you know, um, it's like phony, uh, tried to make uh, excitement things just before they go to a commercial. I don't like when they do that. I know why they do it. I just don't appreciate them. Uh, it's like condescending that I can't accept the reality. They have to gin up some phony evidence. So I don't like that part. But it was very informative. They show you how they grow the coca and how they make it and then how they transport it uh, in Peru. Uh, by way of an anecdote, I was in um, on a bus with a couple of girls from Australia. We were going from Peru to Bolivia and you have to uh, get off the bus and they check all your bags and then they check the bus and then uh, after they feel it's fine you can get back on the bus well before we got to the border I felt something in my seat I wasn't able to be comfortable in my seat and what it was was a big brick of coca leaves wrapped up in this green uh, plastic and they were dispersed all over the bus which I I only knew because I made a big fuss about what's this? You know, I thought maybe the person before uh, had left it, but the girl on the other side of the bus said, you know, wink, wink, it's mine, just uh, leave it alone and pipe down, you know. Uh, but I was talking to the girls, I thought, I don't want to be mistakenly blamed for it, that it's mine, you know. So it worked out, and I guess, uh, I guess this is known. It's actually legal in Peru, but um, transporting it is the problem, but nobody got arrested. Um, and so it's funny, as we gain more information, I years ago I learned that uh, Coca was put in uh, the drink Coca-Cola. I guess it stopped in 1913, but it was previously before. When you were drinking Coca-Cola, you were drinking cocaine. Um, it's still... Although someone will say in minute amounts, of course, but it's still in coffee. When you're drinking coffee, it's from coca leaves, so you're drinking cocaine. I, I, I still find it funny how sometimes people are not aware of this. Um, I can totally relate now when I see people lined up at Tim Hortons or at Starbucks. It's because they're addicted to this drink of coffee. I've never drank coffee, I'm never going to, but uh, it's not because of that, I just don't like it, but um, you have to admit, when you're drinking coffee, you're drinking cocaine. I just don't know why people refuse to admit that. As far as other shows about this topic, um, there's of course Breaking Bad, uh, which I think was such a great show, and then the spinoff Better Call Saul, which I liked with Bob Odenkirk, I really like him. Um... Then there's Narcos, um, and another anecdote, I was in, uh, when I met a girl who invited me to her house in Culiacan, I went out there and I I was not aware that uh, Culiacan is where they grow all the 
marijuana um, that the cartel then ships uh, up to the U.S. I just was not aware of it at the time. We didn't have internet, so I didn't know. But once I was in Culiacan, I saw the police just all sitting around. I realized, oh boy, this is where it all happens, you know. Um, so then uh, when I was in uh, Colombia, I started my trip of South America in Colombia. I met up with a group of uh, mostly Germans, a couple of Americans, um, and we went uh, we were in Medellin. We went up to the, we took the gondola up and went up there to look at a, it was like a museum type thing. And we walked back down through the favelas. Instead of taking the gondola down, we walked through the favelas. It was very interesting, um, very exciting uh, with all the murals and graffiti and all that. And what I realized is in the subway, the st subway in Medellin are pristine. And it's because the people there want to keep their, uh, subways pristine um, they really proud of their city which they should be it's such a beautiful city I really loved it um, so then I also came across uh, a gentleman on YouTube he has he also has a podcast he's an Englishman named Sean Atwood I'll put his link I'll put his uh, show in the link uh, you can find out about him he is the most interesting man um, and he'll tell you more about this topic than I even know about. Um, he was the biggest ecstasy uh, trafficker, and he was uh, he met up with Pablo Escobar. He can tell you about his uh, exploits with him. He tried to convince him to stop, but uh, Escobar wouldn't listen. Of course, then the Americans decided to take him down. Um, so Sean talks about um, that the prison system... That was his best episode when he was informing us about that. It's all about money. It's not about the war on drugs. It's about the money they get for uh, housing pris prisoners. And it's a business. Make no mistake. It is a business and they make a lot of money for it. Another anecdote. I was in the U.S. at the time when uh, Gary Webb, an investigative journalist, broke the story about cocaine uh, and its link uh, to the CIA. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I was fascinated. There was like a three-part series and I read it all and it was very informative. We knew nothing about this until Gary Webb broke the story. Uh, but of course, when you break a story like that, you know you've made enemies and you're a target. And of course, they made his um, life into a movie called Kill the Messenger with Jeremy Renner. But after that, he was a marked man and of course... Um, I'll put a link in. Democracy Now! Uh, did a segment on him and the gentleman said he died of suicide. Uh, I, I personally um, am skeptical. I'll put it that way. I'm skeptical that it was suicide. Nowadays we know about Epstein when we, we say uh, he died by suicide. Uh, this was, I think, one of the first examples of that. But I don't want to say too much because I have no evidence of it. It's just my... Uh, Punch. Um, and then there was another story um, that I find, think you'll find interesting. It's called Most Wanted. Um, one of our one of Canada's great journalist, investigative journalists, Victor Malarik, uh, broke this story about a story in um, Thailand, and um, a gentleman a Canadian who went over there, and they were he was involved, but he he wanted to get out, but the Canadian police flew over a couple of their agents and they tried to, um, I don't know if you could say trick him, but they tried to ensnare him in this. And um, I'll let the movie explain it, but I think you'll really enjoy watching this. Um, and it was just a whole sordid affair. Um, and by the way, uh, Sean Atwood spoke to a gentleman who is the only one to have ever broken out of a prison in Thailand. Um, and he, his movie is on YouTube. You can watch it. I'll put a link there too as well. And so that's about it for my information for cocaine. It was uh, the party drug of the 70s. Terrible drug. Don't get involved with it. Um, by the way, if you've never seen French Connection, this was a, a movie that I grew up watching. 
uh, if you have never seen it, probably uh, one of the most highly entertaining action movies you'll ever watch with Gene Hackman about Popeye Doyle. Um, so if you have, have never seen that, make sure you do yourself a favor and watch that. Okay, so that's it for today.